Um, I don't know if it's something new. I think it's um, you know it's an added member of the family. It's a, it's, a, it's another another team player. As a new article published by the Times that claims Meghan bullied her royal aides at Buckingham Palace. I didn't know much about him. I know the royal family was something she found fascinating. She had one of Princess Diana's books on her bookshelf. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. Today, we are going to be talking about a dear topic in my heart, and that is Meghan Markle. Meghan, 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 you evil little genius. When you search up Meghan Markle on the internet, what do you often see? I don't know, how about someone who is perfectly crafted, you know on the outside has this warmth to her, her sense of style and the way she carries herself seem inspiring. She even always has this lovely look towards her husband, and it's all very nice, but it's also an act. If you were the kind of person who can be fooled by looks and charm, a person like Meghan Markle might seem like your idol. But if you were the kind of person who isn't idolizing celebrities for a living, and you're willing to do a little bit more research and turn down your bias factor, you'll realize this person isn't all that great. So here are 10 very shady facts about Meghan Markle. Make sure to watch till the end because we are saving the most scandalous tea for last. Also, make sure to hit subscribe and give this video a like. Or dislike, I mean, I don't really mind. 1. Using people and then dropping them. Meghan did the classic social climb. At first, Meghan was married to Trevor Ingleson. Being around Trevor made it easier to score roles such as CSI and Deal or No Deal. It wasn't really that impressive, but considering the fact that she was a nobody at the time, it was pretty good. Things were seemingly going well for them until a couple of months later, when Meghan landed the role on the show Suits, and that basically ended their relationship. Trevor tried to make the marriage work and even moved his office from Los Angeles to New York so he could be closer to her in Toronto. But unfortunately for him, Meghan was ready to move to her next target. How do we know Meghan was only using Trevor? Well, much to his surprise, Meghan moved out of their apartment and returned the wedding and engagement ring he bought her via FedEx. I guess she realized she didn't need his connections anymore and dipped. Next up, we have Meghan Markle's next target, Canadian celebrity chef Corey Vitilio. Meghan and Corey were engaged in 2014. Corey was the owner of a trendy Toronto eatery called The Harbored Room which opened doors to a higher class of society for Meghan. This relationship turned Meghan from an actress to a socialite. Two, leaving her fiance for Prince Harry. Meghan and Corey were engaged from 2014 to 2016. Weirdly enough, Meghan ended up being set on a blind date with Prince Harry while she was still engaged to Corey. That's suspicious. That's weird. She suddenly dropped him like a hot potato when the next eligible bachelor was available. And that eligible bachelor was very, very high on the social food chain. When a source close to Corey's camp asked if Meghan's breakup with him had anything to do with Harry, the source said, I can't comment on that. Hmm, can't or shouldn't. 3. Wearing Princess Diana's favorite perfume to bait Harry. Using scent to play on the past is a manipulative tactic used by only the brightest. I mean, to think that if she wore Diana's favorite perfume on their first date, it would make him feel this type of familiarity and be more fond of her. I mean, it's genius. Scary, but genius. Also, a source close to the palace said this, and you know it's legit because they don't let just any random hobo speak on their behalf. So you know it's definitely someone inside the palace doors. 4. Speaking of Princess Diana, let's talk about Meghan's obsession with her. When Meghan and Harry first got engaged, they did an interview together, one where Meghan dominated and Harry followed along mindlessly. She brags in a quirky manner about not knowing anything about the royal family and only asking if Harry was nice. I didn't know much about him and so the only thing that I had asked her when she said she wanted to set us up was, I had one question, I said, well is he nice? Because if he wasn't kind it just didn't, it didn't seem like it would make sense and so 
This was a very quirky thing Megan did where it was like, oh, I don't know if he's a prince. I just want a nice man and I have no idea what the royal family is. Is that a TV show on HBO? Oh, please. The truth is, Megan was always fascinated with the princess lifestyle and more importantly, was fascinated with Princess Diana herself. She once blogged about Kate Middleton and even posed holding a magazine cover Kate was on. She was hanging outside Buckingham Palace as a teen. And in a 2014 blog post, she wrote, and I quote, Little girls dream of being princesses. I, for one, was all about the she princess of power. She even continues saying that grown women seem to retain this childhood fantasy. Oh yeah, girl. We can see very well how you retain that fantasy. She then writes, Just look at the pomp and circumstance surrounding the royal wedding and endless conversation about Princess Kate. Hmm. Look at the pomp and circumstance surrounding the royal wedding and endless conversation. The expose continues when a former friend of Meghan spoke to Mail Online and said, I know the royal family was something she mentioned she found fascinating. She had one of Princess Diana's books on her bookshelf. Remind me again how unfamiliar she was with the royal family? Oh wait, she wasn't. And I, you know, because I'm from the States, you don't grow up with the same understanding of, of the royal family. And mm. so, while I now understand very clearly, while I now understand very clearly, while I now understand very clearly, while I now understand very clearly. The same former friend even says, I wasn't shocked or even surprised to hear about Prince Harry. I knew she used to love the prince's diaries. Five, former friends exposing Meghan. Now this video gets even shadier when her former friends expose how Meghan really thinks. Remember earlier on when I mentioned all the shady and manipulative tactics Meghan uses? Some of you probably thought, hey, sad face, give her the benefit of the doubt. It's all a coincidence. Well, not really a coincidence if the people who knew you before fame come out to expose you for being calculative and manipulative. Megan's ex-friends told Mail Online, the person I knew is not there anymore. There's Megan before fame and Megan after fame. All I can say now is that I think Megan was calculated, very calculated, in the way she handled people and relationships. She is very strategic in the way she cultivates circles of friends. Once she decides you're not a part of her life, she can be very cold. Lizzie Cundy exposes Megan for social climbing and being manipulative. I'm sensing a theme here. For those of you who don't know Lizzie Cundy, she's an English TV personality and she first met Megan in 2013. Lizzie flat out called Megan a social climber when she said, and I quote, Megan was sitting next to me. She wanted pictures with everyone because she didn't know anyone. She wanted to meet people and get to know who's who. It was a very high society party. She was climbing the ladder as it were. People are full on exposing her and yet everyone shrugged this off. Lizzie then says Megan said she'd love to have a celebrity boyfriend. She loved Britain and felt very at home there. She loved a London life and wanted to stay and work there and have a boyfriend. Well, I guess she didn't feel that at home in Britain. Lizzie then says that after marrying Harry, Meghan has become more manipulative and that she only cares about herself even though she wants to portray this reincarnation of Princess Diana, bullying her staff members. I'm gonna keep this simple because by the time you watch this, I probably already have a video about Meghan being a bully up. So I'm gonna link you to that right here. An article written by the Times UK headlines with, nothing was ever good enough. Megan left staff shaking with fear. Shaking with fear. That doesn't sound like a people's princess to me. Palace recommendations didn't please Megan. Since Harry was marrying a biracial American who was once divorced, the palace tried to bend a little rules in order to make Megan as comfortable as possible. They had to go out of their way in order to make the marriage a success so that if it wasn't, they wouldn't be blamed. The source said, everyone knew the institution would be judged by her happiness. The mistake they made was thinking she wanted to be happy. She wanted to be rejected because she was obsessed with that narrative from day one. What was that narrative you may be asking? To leave royal duties and go be a star in America. And what better way to go than to play the victim narrative so you'll be supported? 
Sources said that before the wedding, the couple had a meeting with a senior aide who told them that the palace was doing everything it could to help and there was no need to think she had to take on her role in a particular way. If she was passionate about the acting world, they could help her think about finding a role within the film industry. And what did Megan do? She thanked them but said no. She said she had no wish to carry on acting. Instead, she wanted to concentrate her humanitarian and philanthropic work as well as support Harry as a member of the royal family. How cute! She wanted to concentrate on humanitarianism while bullying members of her staff. There is nothing more America loves than a Hollywood victim. It's astounding how blind we get when some rando celebrity starts crying to us about their problems. They're privileged problems, that is. But real ones with a working brain know not to believe everything a celebrity tells us. Sources have come out and told Times UK that Meghan wanted to be the victim because she could convince Harry that it was an unbearable experience and they had no choice but to move to America. 9. Having an interview with Oprah By the time you see this video, Meghan and Harry's interview with Oprah will be up for the world to see. On July 29th, 2019, we told you guys about how Oprah Winfrey wants to help Meghan and Harry out for some real estate business, and in return, they will sit to do an interview with her. So then months later, on February 15, it was announced that they will sit with Oprah for an interview. Cheers to the people who doubted me. Megan claims that she was upset because she couldn't speak her side of the story through her publicist. So she went to go out and do it herself. She was furious that the media kept talking about her in a bad light and she wanted to control the narrative. And what better way to do it than go on Oprah and cry about your privileged celebrity life? 10. What her court case exposed about her. She seems to have an obsession with her narrative, and in her court case, it was exposed that she had a hand in the making of the book Finding Freedom in order to control the narrative and fix her reputation. She was even exposed for giving her friends permission to go and speak on her behalf to People magazine. All of this so she can control the narrative. Her having a hand in the making of the book Finding Freedom shows that she's a fraud because she was so concerned about privacy, yet she was leaking information to authors to write about her and basically fix up her image with this book as damage control. And this was what led to Megan losing one of her rounds in her court battle with a &L. Having an interview with Oprah is Megan's shady way of trying to fix her reputation and putting all the blame on the royal family. Megan was found lying in court. Megan has repeatedly changed statements several times and she was found having lied in some of those times as well. The official court documents state that there are now on the record a number of inconsistent statements made by her that she will need to explain. If you're interested in a detailed post explaining what went on with Megan in the court trials, head on to exposingsmg.com where we explain everything in detail. Well, you guys made it to the end. This video went from shady things about Megan to downright red flags in her whole persona. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what was the craziest thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you next time.